Hello everybody, happy Tuesday evening, hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to. First, we are at 2,020 subscribers to the YouTube channel. Shout out to all the subscribers, old and new. And special tip of the cap goes to the 26 channel members, including new channel member, the Hawks family, and elite channel members, Y2KHA, Rip, Scott Todd, and Brandon McKell, also known as Hawkast. I had to think for a little while on whether or not I even wanted to do the Let Russ Cook video this week because it seems like such a joke at the moment. It sounds like a punchline, like I said at the end of my video yesterday, because he's just not playing well. And I think a lot of people at the moment would actually prefer that we take the kitchen away from Wilson for the rest of the season and maybe put it in the hands of Carson and Hyde. But after thinking about it for a little bit, I've decided that doing that would kind of defeat the purpose of the series, and it would also contradict the point I'm trying to make when I'm talking about Let Russ Cook. Let Russ Cook is just a buzz phrase, essentially. It's just a phrase that happens to use the name of the Seahawks quarterback in a cute way. Because... It's not about Russell Wilson specifically. It's about the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks who is making $35 million a year. His name happens to be Russell Wilson right now. One day, it will be a different quarterback who is the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks who may be making that kind of money or more. Right now, we have a quarterback who is taking up a massive chunk of the team's salary cap. This is a contract he was given a year plus ago, uh, maybe 15 months ago. And it doesn't really matter if we see him play poorly in a game or over a stretch of games. When you are making that kind of money in the NFL, you either need to be able to handle higher responsibilities or you need to take a hike, period. So... Thinking about whether or not I wanted to do this video today, I kind of settled on this simple realization. I believe that a pass-first attack, unless you are the Ravens or maybe the 49ers or a team that is so good at running the ball, they can get by other ways. Unless you're a team like that, a pass-happy attack is the way to win in the NFL. And that's true for any team. But it's especially true for any team that has a massive portion of their salary cap tied up in the quarterback position. Seahawks are one of them. Packers are another one of them. Chiefs are another one of them. There are a bunch of other teams. You guys know who I'm talking about. The, the Buccaneers and Saints have a lot of salary cap tied up into their quarterbacks. If you have that kind of investment in your quarterback, then the quarterback needs to be able to handle the responsibility of being the driving force behind your offense. And in my video yesterday, I kind of went into Wilson's career so far, and I wondered, is he this guy? And I think the answer is you can go either way on it. There have been stretches of football in Wilson's career where he's looked like he can be the guy, and then we have stretches like right now where it looks like maybe he can't handle it. But at the end of the day, this is winning football. I firmly believe that, unless you have a dominant rushing attack like, say, the Ravens, who are playing to my right as I speak. So, one way or the other, Wilson needs to be able to handle this kind of responsibility or else he is stealing money from this organization, period. So, I don't want to get away from what I consider to be winning football. And, um, again, unless you're the Ravens or maybe the 49ers, winning football is passing a lot, passing on pass favorable downs, and basically having good situational play calling. Maybe that's what I should have called this series instead, situational play calling instead of let Russ cook. But regardless, the whether or not the situational play calling is good for the Seahawks is sometimes going to be independent of whether or not the results are actually good. And that's another thing I didn't want to get away from, which I kind of would have been if I had stopped doing this series just because Wilson is playing poorly. If we do not, if we have 
good situational play calling, which I firmly believe is passing the ball 60 to 62% of the time, um, passing the ball on all or almost all of your second and longs and third and longs, and things don't go well, that doesn't mean you make the situational play calling bad. It means that maybe the specific play calls are not good, or the players are not executing the good play calls. But the problem is somewhere else. It's tough for me to believe this team would benefit from starting to run the ball 55% of the time like we were two years ago. I don't think that's how this team wins a Super Bowl either. I don't think that's how this team has an elite offense again. I don't. So, I'm going to stick with this series and I'm going to continue to believe that passing the ball frequently and passing the ball on pass favorable downs and situations is what this team needs to do. It's on the play caller to come up with the right specific play calls that will work, and it's on the players to execute. All right, so with that in mind, let's quickly go through these numbers. They haven't changed that much from last week, and there's mostly good stuff as usual as far as I'm concerned, even though the results were putrid against the Giants. You can see the run percentage is 39%, the 23rd in the league, this is pretty close to what it was last week, and it strikes me as being pretty reasonable given the way the investments are on this team. Our first down run percentage is 46%, which is 22nd in the league. This is down slightly from last week. Seems reasonable to me. Maybe against this specific matchup, we should have run the ball a little bit more. But if you're looking at the overall picture of the season, I think this is a pretty good place to be. On first down and 15 or more, we are running the ball 17% of the time, which I think is quite good. I would prefer it to be zero or under 10%, but 23rd in the league is fine. We did not face any additional first down and 20 or mores against the Giants, which is good. So we're at a 40% still there, which is ninth, but only five of these situations have happened in the first 12 games. So that seems reasonable to me. Our second down run percentage is at 36% which is 26th in the league, so we are one of the most pass-happy teams in the league on second down. Overall, I think that's very good. You could argue maybe we should bump it up a little bit, especially with what's been happening lately, but in general, I think this is a good sign, and I like it. Second down and medium. This is kind of interesting. In a game where we had Chris Carson, we did not run the ball on a single second and medium all game, and I don't have a huge problem with it. I think you could make a pretty good argument that you should have done it once or twice, but um, we are now 21st in the league in running on second and medium. I don't have an objection with that number overall. Maybe the situation could have called for a little bit more against the Giants, but overall, I think this is a pretty good place to be. And on second down and long, we are running the ball on 24% of our plays, which is 26th in the league. So I, again... Given the way the investments are divvied up on this team, given the way that certain positions have been injured this season, you know, we haven't had Chris Carson in every game, we haven't even had Carlos Hyde in every game, it makes sense that you want to pass a lot on second and long. I stand by that, even though the results for the offense have not been very good lately. The question is, can your players execute and can the specific play calls that your offensive coordinator picks work? And that gets us to third down. This is the one area where the team is running more than they have before. They're up to 28% running the ball on third down, which is up from last year. It's eighth in the league. It's one of the highest marks in the league. Um, I, I think a big reason why this is may be that Wilson takes off and runs on third down. And some people may say, well, that shouldn't count as a run play. And you're right. It probably shouldn't, not in the traditional sense. But if Wilson isn't confident enough to let it fly on a third down then maybe that speaks to something wrong with the offense as well. So um, it's not exactly something I'm thrilled about because a lot of third downs you face are not going to be able to be picked up by a three-yard QB scramble, which seems to be what Wilson ends up getting these days because he's just not that fast anymore. And finally, third down and long, we're running the ball 44% of the time, which is by far the most in the league, which obviously I hate it. And yeah, that gets us to the end. So we've gone down in every category with the exception of third down. We're not a very good third down team. I, I suspect that's the reason why. But the main thing I want people to take away from this video today is 
just because the offense is playing bad it does not mean the situational play calling is bad. And I firmly believe that with the makeup of this team's roster and with the distribution of our cap uh, among our players, Wilson either needs to be able to handle a heavy a pass heavy load or he needs to go sit down or take a pay cut or do something that isn't eat up $35 million against the cap every year for the next few years. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Peace out, go Hawks. Uh, stream tonight, not sure what I'm going to stream quite yet. I'm going to go watch the rest of this Cowboys-Ravens game, and yeah, peace out, go Hawks.